welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to vibe. And why we shall. What's happening with you? Not much. Not much? But- you couldn't do any of this before you hit. I, mean, I wanted to be authentic. To who? To anybody from NBA Threads who watches this podcast or listens to it. So, for anybody who's not watching, I'm opening a bottle of Pedialyte. Potentially spilling a bottle of Pedialyte. Spilling. This is so unnecessary. Hmm? This is so unnecessary. What do you mean? You struggling to open this bottle? I'm not struggling to open it. It's open. After you struggled. I didn't struggle. You definitely struggled. Well, I had a mic I had a microphone in front of me, so I wanted to make sure I didn't damage it. Because it's a very expensive microphone. Anywho. What's up? What's good? In the hood. How you feeling? It's nice to be back. Okay, you're not going to come over here all bubbly lucky charms when you've been gloomy McGloomerson all day. Actually, I can. One, because that was private. It was a family matter. But since you want to bring it up, um, this is my release. So this is me releasing. Hmm. Appreciate you not bringing up old stuff. It's not old. It's literally the same day. No, because it's not now. I'm just being transparent. That's what we're about. As you sip Pedialyte, Pedialyte. Like Lil Wayne in the early thousands. Is that what he did? No, he sip scissor. Oh, scissor. Yeah. Get for the camera. Pedialyte. <clears throat> How's it going? It's going. Yeah. I like your shirt. Thank you. Sweatshirt. <clears throat> Who got it for you? J2, also known as Jess. Yeah. I guess I don't have to call her J2, but um, known as Jess. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are you drinking? <clears throat> the rest of the little bit of the wine that you left. My wine. Actually, it seems like quite a bit. No, I opened another bottle of a different wine and had to cross contaminate. But I wanted to finish my wine mm. before you did. Cause mm. I know how you are. Anything else? Because you want to comment on my mood and now apparently I drink all of your all of your beverages. So is there is there like a third to just make it I'm sure I'll have some perfect trio? I have something. Okay. You sure? You wanna just just get it going now. Get it I mean, out the just, way. You just bring in a whole episode on me. No conversation. No one. We just built a set. You know, it's funny. Is it now? It is funny. I'm going to take, take a little bit of time. Um, because I hear from you a lot. A lot since we're all about transparency, right? We're going to be, tra- initiative? We're gonna be transparent. <laughs> type of initiative no, 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 no. Take. I'm speaking. I have the mic. I have a mic too. I have the mic that's being spoken into. All I ever hear is whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, all you had to do was say, let's do this and we'll do that. But blah, you, blah, that. you just, no, you know what I did? I led by example. And I got, I started setting things up because when I set these lights and these cameras up, you know what that means? That means we're recording. There's no conversation. With there need to be a conversation. There did. No, there didn't. There's always a conversation. Not anymore. To make sure I'm in the right headspace to record. I figured if you weren't, you'd tell me. Because you're an adult. And oh. you can and you can speak your truth. <laughs> and let me know if you're not feeling If you weren't feeling it, we just left the stuff up. We record tomorrow. Okay. But you didn't say anything, so we're here now. Okay. Do you know what my week was like since you don't want to talk about it? Talk about yours? Sure. It's been... Uh, it's been crazy. So I was sick and then took two days off just of work because I was, I was out sick and then you and Silas got sick. And then yesterday thought that our house was flooding. 
<laughs> After you didn't believe me when I was what, saying. I said, you think that there's water underneath the house. Yes. And then you proceeded to open the attic. <laughs> because I heard a beeping noise and it sounded like it was coming from up above. It came off as you thought I was delusional. Yeah. Well, that's. And thankfully, Solace was like, there's water into the house. And, and that's not. said, we need to get a new house because there's water in the house. So, yes, I checked the attic and it wasn't up there. There was nothing up there. And then I went underneath the house and the crawl space. And there was a, basically a pipe, for, I guess, for the sump pump that wasn't fixed properly or something. And I guess just over time, it all the rain and water and pressure because we had, had a storm last night, I guess, tornado watch, I guess, flood mm -hmm. watch, tornado flood watch. All the pressure just, just broke, not broke, but it misaligned, I guess, became on the line and uh, water was just shooting everywhere. Um, but the water we heard was the pipe shooting water up to the to the floorboards basically so once we tightened the the um the pole back once we the pipe back excuse me the water was able to drain so there was a lot of there was some standing water there last night but i got most of it out i was gonna go back today and do the rest but luckily it was all gone so crisis averted because i didn't want to have to call more jenkins and you know what's funny is i called uh, i called bobby this is how me and Bobby are just like two totally, I mean, we're already two totally different men, but our mindsets are like totally different. Like Bobby is all like gung ho. There's a problem. Let's get in. Let's fix it. Me, I'm a little bit more methodical because I realize there's a, there's a level of risk associated with any problem that you try to fix. There's water shooting up and standing underneath the house where there's like wires, electric wires. I was like, I don't need to, this doesn't need to be my end. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I don't want to die. So I go outside. I put on the only rain boots we have in the house are your, are my are your, butterfly. your butterfly rain boots. I got this, Aldi. I got this big ass, um, five hour jacket. That's like a winter coat slash rain yeah, coat. You can remove the inside, the yeah. lining, and it still You're had welcome. the still had the tags on it. Yeah, it's brand new. Well, it's warm underneath the house. So I actually didn't really need it, but so it is. But it's big. It's bigger than it. Well, the medium was too small. It was like an extra large. So, I'm so I got you large. this big coat. You complained that the walking around the yard in these in these butterfly boots and Bobby pulls up. He's got like some khakis and a little. Yeah, He was real like going disc golfing. So he was like, and he's surfacing. He says, he goes, he's like, nice boots. So I'm like, yo, I said that pipe is shooting water up. I said, but there's like cords and stuff over there. So I don't want to go over and get electrocuted. And then Bobby just goes. Right into the middle of it, and then he tightens the pot, uh, tightens the uh, the pipe, and I'm standing there with all this gear on, looking crazy, holding a, holding a little flashlight. It's like, yeah, that's it. Good job, Bob. And then, he's also a general contractor. He is. So, but he, but even even if it wasn't like, I could have called him about any situation, and Bobby just it was just rushing. It's this old saying where there's a well, I don't want to say his last name, but um. Oh, there's a saying where there's a there's, there's a way. way. No, yeah, but I'll, I'll be damned. But yeah, we, the wind I'm so glad. I'm so glad he's there right down the road, and he actually caught him while he was at home too. So the windows, the blinds were open, so um, we saw the white pickup truck pull in, and the girls were like, "Who's that?" And I was like, "Oh gosh," I said, "It's Mr. Bobby." So if Mr. Bobby's here, it's got to be bad. I'm trying to keep it from getting bad if I call Bobby. Um, yeah. So any uh, unsolicited advice to people out there? Don't buy a hundred year old house, even if it's been renovated, because that's what we did this past summer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's out there now. Yeah. But. I mean, along with buying this old but house squeaky floors we also bought three and a half acres of land so there's a vision there's three point it's a little less than three. Oh, now whenever i say 3.4 no yes it's 3.41 it's not three and a half it's three, three acres of land I'm about 3.41 acres of land old house sits on so there's a vision 
that prayerfully will be executed or a for sale sign will be going up. Um, no, this is probably the biggest, the biggest thing that we've had to deal with. Um, and I'm sure that there are many worse things that, that could be dealt with. I've never lived on a house with a crawl space. Than the snake bugs. <laughs> Don't get me started with the stink bugs. But that's like that's like a North Carolina thing. I don't think that's. The I house don't know thing. that I ever saw stink bugs at the old house. Because uh, you never spend any time. I mean, it was it was probably a. You're right. There wasn't a crawl space, so it's not like they could get into the foundation. Mm -hmm. But we had another type of problem mm -hmm. that we also have here. I really hadn't seen seen yeah. a couple. So we. <laughs> What are you want to talk about that? I, I I was not prepared. Mm, let's talk about the uh, the Jonathan Majors interview. I'm 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 really tired of Jonathan Majors. I mean, I watched it. It was 15 minutes. I don't know that it helped him or hurt him. It was kind of just neutral ground. Um, oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's beady light. It's grape flavor is hidden. Um, I, I kind of took it with a grain of salt because I recognize that he's a performer. Um, mm. he's a performer and he's sitting in a room probably 10 feet away from his horrible attorney or some legal counsel. Um, so obviously most of what he's saying is scripted, but, um, the only thing that I felt I got more context in was regarding that statement that people used against him when he like they played the recording about her being like Coretta or mm. Michelle Obama and again I take it with a grain of salt but based on his elaboration he was basing it on the men Martin Luther King Barack Obama and obviously their women are black women um I I don't I don't know that I have skewed my perspective. He was likening himself to Barack. And yeah, like the type of man he's trying to become. He's, he was a great man. He's trying to be a great he's, man. I am a great man. Um, he is a great man for the culture, for yeah, whatever else he said. And he referenced other credible great men um, who happen to have black wives. So it came, I think, for... Most people, it came off as he was telling her to be a black woman. And I know a lot of feedback I heard was, if you want a black woman, just be with a black woman. Um, but what I gathered from it was he's holding him up himself up to a standard of these men who happen to be black because he is a black man, mm. um, which I think is common. Most, most people make comparisons of themselves to people of their race. Um, I would assume, mm -hmm. um, usually when black men are cre quoting themselves or comparing themselves to other great men, it's usually, you know, someone who looks like them, someone who's in their field, someone who's doing something similar to what they want to be doing. So I think a little bit gets lost in translation there when you listen to just the audio and you can hear him elaborate on what he means. Um, it just so happens that their wives are black. I don't know if there are any black, great black men he compares himself to whose wives are of another race that he would have quoted them. Um, but of the context of that conversation um, that he elaborated on, that's, that's what he meant. Um, I think he was at, I believe he was asked if he thinks he's going to act again. And he said, yeah, essentially in God's time, I don't doubt that he won't act again. Um, I think there's a, a potential for a great redemption story mm. just because, I mean, he, he is a great performer. Um, he talked about his relationship with Megan Good, how it's a blessing. Again, I still partially think it's a PR stunt. I hope it's a good relationship considering she just got divorced. What do you think about the rumors that she's the woman? Oh, that she's Cleopatra? She probably is. Becky with the good hair. Yeah. That she's the one who they who what's her face all text him. Yeah, Cleopatra. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. So in that case she's a homewrecker. That's not what I said. <laughs> I just said I wouldn't doubt it. I'm saying and if that's the case, then um What are the parameters of a homewrecker? 
I've always assumed a home record. I, don't know. I, I used, used it. A home. I used it very loosely. I was just because they weren't married. Like, can you be a home wrecker? Like, does the home have to be a home of marriage to have a home wrecker come in? If you're not, because you know, a lot of people like the new trend recently with women is There's a new um, trend. Yeah, that I've noticed. Oh. Like, until I'm married, I'm single. So, like, we can be talking. She's single. It, we can be oh, really? dating. I'm single. You. We can be engaged. I'm single. Up until the point that I am married and we are legally bound before God and man, I'm single. So, depending on their perspective, yeah, they had a child together. They have a daughter together, um, which I didn't know it was a girl. I knew they had a baby. I knew he had a baby. I didn't know it was with her. Um and he did talk about how he hasn't seen his daughter in a long time. And I did feel for him for that. Um, whether he was acting or not, I, I still empathize for the idea of a parent being separated from their child uh, for an extended period of time. But, um, but yeah, a lot of women are of the mindset that until they're married, they're single. So if the home is a home of marriage if they're just cohabitating and co-parenting is she really a home wrecker maybe she's just an uninvited guest i gotta tell you i uh, was not prepared for this i this turn i wasn't yeah, but i i appreciate the you know the i appreciate the the pivot um, Does this sweater make me look big? It just looks like a big sweater. <clears throat> it looks like a big sweater. I don't look big in the sweater. Maybe it's the way I'm sitting. I'm kind of slouched. Carry on. The pivot, not the podcast. Um, I think. Oh, well, I guess it just depends on. I didn't realize there was this thing that I. I have no responsibility to anybody if unless I'm married. So. I don't disagree with it. Hmm? I don't disagree with it. I <laughs> I don't know because I, I guess how do you uh, I have trouble with it because how do you prepare yourself for marriage when it's commitment if you can't commit to any tenure of a relationship because it's not marriage it's like I guess and this is the tricky part are you going from the traditional biblical perspective no, of I'm marriage or are you going for the, um, what are those? I'm going from the perspective. Going from modern. I'm going from the perspective of, I'm not going to just marry somebody who I don't know. And to get to know somebody, it takes some time. And it also takes commitment because if I'm, considering marrying this person i have to realize that that's potentially someone we have to commit theoretically the rest of my life to so i don't know how you can can do that if you're like well at any given point i can just well, go somewhere else because i'm not because i'm not i'm not married so it's like how do you how do you ever deserve it if you're just kind of oh, willy willy nilly um, and this because, is from single females. This well, of is course, from, because I think a lot of people tend to think that marriage is like it's a right, <laughs> right? Like it's not. Like it's. I, I don't think that it's owed to anybody. Like any, like anything, anything worth having. Um. So you kind of have to work and and put an effort in and part of that effort I think is is being committed so yeah I, I kind of disagree with that that mindset but I'm I'm married and I'm not single so I don't know what it's like in these streets these days for now um from what I've gathered a lot uh and and this I think a lot of it is from the foundation that and again I'm coming from a female perspective yeah yeah, yeah. stop qualifying just I just want to clarify. Just, just say it. Um, a lot of males. Men. I'm sorry, go ahead. 
You want this to be productive? Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. A lot of males. Tend to take up the time of females, of a woman. A lot of men will take up the time of a, of a woman. She will commit herself to a man for an extended period of time. Then eventually, it sounds like hyperbole, but keep going. Eventually, he realizes she's not the one. He's interested in somebody else, or she's tired of waiting for him mm. to commit mm. that commitment being mm. I want you as my wife. So you've invested as a woman, you've invested one, two, three, four, five years of your life. We all know that being a woman society has taught us that there is expiration date. There are things we need to accomplish by certain times. We have, you know, um, our biological clocks tick. So we have to have children by certain times. Um, and that's all in the unknown of if having bearing children is going to be difficult. Um, and then you just have the cultural norms, the presentations to people that I am a woman who has succeeded in womanhood. I have secured a man. I've had the children. I've had the house, all of this. So I think a lot of women are now of the mindset of I'm single until I'm married mm -hmm. because if I commit four years of my life to you and by year four, you decide, no, this ain't it. That's four years I can't get back. If our relationship started when I was 28, now I'm 32. You know, you start a geriatric pre pregnancy at 34. Like you're now you've lost four years. So I think the concept of I'm single until I'm married means that if you're going to, if within that four year window by year two, someone else comes around and that person is showing interest and that interest could be something, you know what? I might jump ship and pursue that because that might be a door that I need to walk through to get all of my, ch my boxes checked. So that's different than just a general I'm single until I'm married. If it's like I'm 28, I want to have kids by 32 because biologically it's the, the game changes after that point then yeah, that's different. But just the general, <laughs> I'm well, saying I'm single until I'm married. I, I don't, I don't really vibe. I don't really vibe with that, with that mindset. Um, but also it's not solely up to the man, whether a relationship works or not. Right. Like you don't have to just sit around and just kind of, I wonder if today will be the day for four years. Like you got autonomy. You're an adult. If it's not working, if it's that, happening the way that you want it to happen and that's these are conversations that you've had or or and it doesn't seem like it's moving at the pace and you've got plans for your life then yeah absolutely step away see what's there um but the key is step away right don't you know have you know kind of keep this thing just in case and then you know go step out that's me and another thing is that we're humans we're creatures of habit so if you get in the habit of hopping around because things aren't happening as quickly as you want or because you're not married yet, you ain't got the ring. Well, what do you think you're going to be like when someone does finally propose to you? You think you're going to be able to just lock in? Maybe some people can, maybe some people won't. I, I, I don't think it'd be that easy. So um, I think it's, I think it can be a tricky mindset to live in. I'm not going to say I'm all the way out of it as I initially was when you, when you brought it up, but I'm still not a big fan of it. Um, but I think people have autonomy. So if, you know, you in your mind say, I want this by this, this time or this year, and it's not happening. Um, and you've, there've been conversations about it, then yeah, by all means, you know, go back to the field, but just generally speaking, <laughs> I'm not, I'm single until I'm married. I just, I don't know. It just kind of, it sounds kind of, kind of dangerous to me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I stand with it. I support it. I think a lot of it is you have these women who are giving their all to relationships wow. and um, 
they're not getting the ROI that they feel they deserve. You know, they're, you know, they're giving boyfriends, husband privileges and, and then they're not their husbands. <laughs> You being real? I am. You're <laughs> laughing, but I, I if just we, if we hadn't broken up, would you, how long do you think it would have taken you to finally propose? Um, I don't know because I did. Yeah, but we had broken up. Like you, you were. Well, we'd broken up a number of times before. No, but we were. You knew we were done. Done. Um, you did. That's why you went. Well, you you can you can only do it but so many times, right? Like. So yeah, I mean, I knew there, I knew that it wasn't like a limitless supply of breakups that we had or that that I had. Um, but I, I don't know. I just it just seems like, like <laughs> the way you said it, the way you frame it is just like I don't know. I mean, I'm not framing it like a person who's in it. I'm not. No, nah, I mean, it's just like you got these women out here who were all into these relationships, and and men are just and men are just just trash and for playing around and playing games this is and me trying to diminish all men. <laughs> like it's just like, well, damn. This is not <laughs> we me might trying. Just, this all is, this might need to be be gay out here since since men are wasting women's time to diminish all men. What I'm saying is, a lot of times women will put their all into their relationships mm. and then they don't get the return on mm. investment. They don't get the ring. They might get the baby, but they don't get the husband and they don't get the dream that they had. And time, it feels as if for them, time is not on their side. Mm. So I think a lot of women feel like they have to settle. They have to take what they can get. And, and that doesn't seem fair because I don't always feel like men feel that way. Um, I don't know that, in long term, again, this is my my opinionated truth. Mm. I don't see or hear, and I could just not associate in those circles. Men saying like, "I just ha I'm settling. I have to settle. This is all I can get. This is all that's available to me." It seems like men aren't as concerned about it because they know the options are plentiful to them, whereas women don't always have the plentiful options. But I teeter this line of traditionalist and modernist where it's like, okay, well, what approach do you want to take? Mm. Do you want to take the traditionalist biblical approach where the man is supposed to seek you out? You know, you court, you, you know, you're, you're, you, there's more of a structured process or do you want to take the modern way, you know, mid-century modern, whatever it's called, where you're 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 dating, you're on apps, you're 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 finding people, you're having conversations, you're cohabitating, you're doing everything the modern way, um, because the modern way is going to get you. For some people, you might be favored, you might get you might luck out and get a good relationship, get a good marriage, but in others, you might struggle, and I think that's where a lot of these the clash between like the single independent female who also, you know, wants a man that she can be dependent on um, and submissive to where those clashes come to heed very regularly. Again, this is just my opinion because I think a lot of people, you know, you have women who have to fend for themselves. They're, they're getting educated. They have to take care of themselves um, because we don't have that historic culture where you're getting married off at 14 um, and you're popping out babies for, you know, 12 years or whatnot. Um, we're in a culture, a society where women can do and deserve to gain accolades, whether it be professionally, academically, however they please, financially. So you have women who are self-sustaining. And I think a self-sustaining woman, and this can come from the other side too, because you have a lot of men who don't want, you know, you don't want a woman who's just like lazy and can't do nothing for herself. So you appreciate and admire these self-sustaining women, but then you also have an issue with the fact that, you know, they are, They'll talk back to you. They'll, you know, make it very clear that they have their own money and they don't need you. So there's there's this balancing of 
the traditional and then the modern and then what's the hybrid in the middle is there a hybrid in the middle can you have a hybrid in the middle that's successful because like i've seen you know posts where it's like you can't be a wife a mom and a working professional woman successfully you can't have all three but then i've seen stuff about like you can if you want to but it's just who do you want to be yes i want to be a good wife yes i want to be a good mother but i also want to be a good me for myself and being a good me for myself means i'm a good me for all these other people so i think there's so many tentacles that fall off of it um and i know i started off with home and home wrecker but i don't know if megan good was cleopatra come on back okay yeah unless you unless you had something you wanted to chime in um i do want to go back because you asked how long would it have taken for me to propose if we hadn't broken up um and i i i think too often um and it's my fault because I, i've kind of allowed it to kind of be like the event in our story that really changed the course of things but there were a lot of other factors that played into our relationship external um that were a significant cog in any sort of progress that you and i could make mm-hmm. and i don't want that to be like just kind of push off to the side so it's so it's not so much oh david's dragging his feet on proposing like no there were other things that were impacting well i don't know that i ever pressured you to propose no i'm not talking about you i'm just saying you asked how long would it have taken me to propose to you if we hadn't have broken up that last time as if that was the only big thing that had impact on our relationship and the timing of everything and i'm telling you that it wasn't so much that as it was the other things that sort of added time to when I proposed to you. So it's not just you breaking up with me, me having this, this grand epiphany that I can't live my life without Jessica. Although yes, I did realize that, no, I don't want to live my life without Jessica, but we could have been married for two years before that, but we definitely couldn't have. I'm just saying, (laughs) No, we couldn't have, but that's my point, right? Um, Because one, there was some growth that was still needed, but there were also Mm -hmm. other things that were, that were playing into our relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just want to add that in. Uh, No, I don't have anything else to add. (laughs) I just wanted to circle back to that because. You just wanted to redeem yourself. It's not about redemption. It's about being clear got it yeah okay but yeah i i i I posit that megan good was the the woman on the other end of the phone and that's what started all this off Hmm. we will never know we never will wow um before we jump to the next one do not ever ever put Stephen A. Smith on my TV. I really think he's what brought my mood down. What are you talking about? I don't like Stephen A. Smith. You don't like Stephen A. Smith? No. You don't like the goat? You don't like the goat? Who's goat? Stephen A. Smith is a goat. Of what? You cannot be a self-proclaimed goat. Did he self-proclaim himself as a goat? What is he the goat of? A sports commentary. Don't put him on our TV. Why? When I'm home, when I can hear him. He just, I don't like his energy. His energy like brings down my energy. And whatever. It sounds like was, your energy is jealous of his energy. he was going through, like really messed with my spirit. <sighs> you and your spirit. Um, I wanted to watch Stephen A because he was going in. On Jason, on Jason Woodlock, you would if you knew who Jason Woodlock was. Well, I don't care. You should actually. I don't like Stephen A. You should care. Stephen A. is actually and the I, better person he in this. More credibility with me when I saw him on one of my mom's soap operas. 
He, he said one of his friends out either is a producer on the show or something. He's been trying to get on for years. The first time I saw that, I was like, one. I knew I was done with him. Now I'm done. done. I got a lot of love and respect for Stephen A because he's, again, done what you're supposed to do when you get to a place of being substantial. He's, people he's have. diversified. He's diversified himself. Fat. He went from, you know, uh, being a, a columnist. To covering, you know, covering the the Sixers, to working for Fox Sports, I think, and then ESPN, and then ESPN let him go. He tried to do some politics, came back to ESPN, first take. He obviously does the NBA. Now, since he's been on first take, he covers all the sports. He's got his podcast. Now he's acting. He's probably got his own production company. Like Stephen A., I think one, one of his quotes was, um, like a lot of people say, like, LeBron's the American dream. Like, no, no, like, I'm the American dream, like look like where I came from, what I've done, where I'm at, who I am, how much I'm worth, the face of ESPN. I got a lot of love and respect for Stephen there. But yeah, he was going in on Whitlock and uh, anybody who knows who Whitlock is, most people who know who who are aware of who Whitlock is don't like him. So and it's been coming a long time coming. So but I don't. I don't know that I realized that you didn't I'm not care sorry. for him. So I don't like his delivery. That's what makes him. That's what makes him him. I know, but but I mean, that's that's his delivery doesn't. It doesn't deliver to me. That's how most people are. They either you like just lo- he's like him, yeah. Well, yeah, or you can't stand him. Um, I am the latter, not the former, and I yeah. think he also just brought. It was just like why it. Why am I listening to him rant, and I don't know who or what he's ranting about. And I'm like, who is, how fat is this guy that he's calling him fat and then pre-calling his pastor to apologize? That's how you know, that's how you know you about to, that's <laughs> invited to trash when you get that, that pre, uh, pre-infraction cleansing. That's not how it works. Mm. You'd be like, oh, I'm going to murder You don't somebody. know, you don't know until you try. Like, father, forgive me. I'm going to murder this person right quick. No. That's not how that works. I mean, you still, I mean, what is that? What does it matter? You still gonna get the forgiveness. It's as long as you meditated sin. As long as you're genuine. Okay. You still ask for forgiveness. I feel like it, you just fall lower on the docket. All right. What were you about to bump into? Um, I want to talk about how my year ended. Okay. Yeah. And I want, I'm, I'm going somewhere because I'm we're pivoting off of the fact that I talked about how Stephen A. Stephen A. Like pivoted how he's kind of gone after things that he that he wants. Are you going after things that you want? I want to talk about how my year ended last year, and I'm gonna wrap it up, and then we'll get to we'll get to mailbag. Okay. So we had a really big event middle to end of last year where we bought this house. Our uh, first time selling a house mm-hmm. together, buying a house. Huh? So my hair just hasn't been, because I wasn't prepared. Buying, selling. Let me have that hair tie on your wrist. No. It was... <sighs> Thanks. And I thought that was going to be the big event of the year for me. Um, and of course, NBA threads, right? And uh, I got to go to Vegas. Mm-hmm. I, I say I got to go to Vegas. You went to Vegas. I went to Vegas. <laughs> um, but while I was there, uh, I got to uh, hang out with a lot of creators. Cool yeah. And um, got to go to a brunch. Uh, hosted you by do that here. <laughs> Well, I got to go to a very exclusive brunch. Did I tell you about? I, did I tell the story? I was. I told you a mom about how when I, because you know, I, I don't go to, I don't do these things. I tell people all the time. Like I told everybody while I was there, like my wife should be here because this is her space. So we had the RSVP for the brunch. And this is the boardroom and threads, right? Boardroom, Kevin Durant's media company. Um, where was it? What was the restaurant again? Oh, Rio. Tao? No. No. 
Can't remember. Somewhere in Vegas on the strip. Lex. Um, so I, I get there. Um, I uh, confirm. I confirm with both you and Lex that I wasn't overdressed, but I wasn't underdressed either. So I get there, and they're like, "Your name." <laughs> so I didn't know what to tell them, like my name or my handle, because you know that's how people people know me. So I was like David Rushing. So they're like, "Okay, what was your name again?" So I'm like, <laughs> "Like, don't don't tell me." Uh, yeah, let me come all the way out here. They got my name on it. I'm like. They were rushing. And then she's asked the girl behind her and she's like, mm, I was like rushing. She's like, oh yeah, you're good. So I'm, I go in and there's two big security looking dudes there. I told the story to you, right? You okay. Me. All right. <laughs> so I just instinctively I put my hands up because I think they go pat me down. <laughs> they look at me like, bro, just go in. <laughs> it's brunch. Like, it's just a brunch. I just figure you're in a line. You walk up, you see two big black dudes in all black. You just, they got to pat you down because that's, that's what not. happens. But they were looking at the brush. It's going. a room full of creators. I don't, I don't think anything's going to look off. No, there was a, there was a lot of money in there. Trust me. Um, which is why you had to be on the list. You had to be on the list. I, which is why I thought you had to get patted down. I mean, everybody was in there. Rich Paul was in there. Sean Sharani was, was in there. invitation only. I'm just saying. So anyways, I go in and, um, I'm in there. I don't, I don't really network or anything like that. So I'm just kind of, I go to the bar. And I'm like, yo, let me get a, let me get a Woodford. I like, don't have Woodford. I was like, God damn it. So I'm like, what do you have? And we got Maker's Mark. I'm like, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm a Maker's Mark ambassador. Are you really? Mm-hmm. So what's up? So I have to go in like six years. Can we kiss? When they open my barrel and get my. Oh, get your. Can we kiss? They actually Maker's invited Mark? us to some kind of thing. Oh, Mass one, one more time. Can we get some? Yeah, if you buy it. You ain't no ambassador. So, anyways, I was like, let me get some. Let me get a maker's mark. Single, neat. So, of course, I asked. I'm like, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, don't ask a question. Don't ask a question. And I'm like, I asked a question. I'm like, do I owe you for this? And she's like, no, it's open bar. I was like, oh. But then I was like, oh, I don't have no cat. I was like, can I cash out for you a tip or anything? She was like, no. <laughs> And she goes off to somebody else. So like, all right, I'm officially that that guy. I've, I've made it very easy to identify me as a guy yeah. who's out of place. Because she was likely getting paid hourly. I mean, this is my wheelhouse. So Beam was probably the sponsor. Probably, whoever. And he was getting paid at least $58 an hour. Yeah. So she didn't need my little tip. No. <laughs> so, uh. I'm there and I see some, I see some, some med employees who had, uh, who I had been communicating with. I go introduce myself, my A and David, and then everybody's just like, oh my God, <laughs> you're your rush. That's my, my threads handle for anybody who doesn't know. And I'm like, yes, that's me. <laughs> and that's where that was like my interaction with like everybody. And it was so weird to be the center of, of attention in a room full of people who are like, Famous, and I wasn't obviously the most popular person there. But when I met some of these people, their eyes were just like, "Oh my god!" Like, you're the guy, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's me." Like one person asked me, he "Was like, what were you doing before?" <laughs> and I was like, "Going to work, <laughs> changing diapers, Killing stink bugs, paying my mortgage." Like, <laughs> what was I doing? Like, like, he wanted me to have a story or something. I'm like, like, bro, I was sleeping in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and then meta launch threads and you know I, see. I had to bum the wi-fi from mcdonald's and I'm like no nah, man i was just i'm just a regular dude and i was doing regular dude things before and i'm doing regular dude things now like i'm just you know i'm a little popular so everybody was like oh my god are you a rush are you a rush and i'm like yeah it's me it's me but i got to meet a lot of cool people uh, some people who i've looked up to um had to meet a Josiah Johnson, who I, I know you, I don't think you know. Uh, we got to meet Trayvon Edwards, who I don't think you know either. But I met Rich Paul. Adele's, Adele's husband. Hus Adele's husband, yes. <laughs> Mr. Adele. Uh, I was Turner, the center for the Pacers. And I got to meet Adam, the head of Instagram and, and Threads. And had a, had a really nice conversation uh, with him. And uh, 
obviously got a picture it's on my it's on my threads profile so it was just a really it was a yeah, really i should feel some type of way that that's the picture that's pinned <laughs> like well it's it's funny because the wife of nine years it's funny because children. it's funny is the pin it's funny because the whole mayor thing right you know i fought it tirelessly but eventually i just leaned into it mm-hmm. so i changed my bio they call me the mayor of nba threads but i also say but i'm really just have you seen my okay mm-hmm. but i feel like if somebody comes across my profile like the mayor of nba threads like who's this guy but then they scroll down they see me and adam they're like oh shit <laughs> he's actually the mayor of nba threads so that's part of why i did it um but yeah that and then you know got to meet some of these other big name creators and got to be in the suite at the game and uh, it was it was just amazing it was it was a i don't want to say it was a once in a lifetime experience but it was like a first in a lifetime experience and um it was it was great and uh all that was possible because of obviously nba threads and the community there and then you know me being kind of one of the first movers uh, i think to kind of really help get that get the community up and going and uh it's afforded me the opportunity to go on a couple of podcasts too mm-hmm. it was three now two this it was on loose ball boys with dimitri and mm-hmm. uh was on tones bench mob entertainment podcast and it was great like stuff i've always wanted to do like just mm-hmm. go on it go on a podcast and talk basketball like i was a guest on somebody else's podcast is so wild to me and i'm so grateful one to both uh dimitri and and, and tone for having me on like trusting because they didn't know me <laughs> like they, like it's the, oh it's the guy who drops memes on <laughs> like me threads like but oh, they man. you know they trusted me with their their and you know how you feel like we don't just let anybody come on rush vibes Right, like we mm-hmm. we make sure yeah, it's people have tried. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> so, you know, to trust somebody with your baby, you know, and I'm I'll be forever grateful. Um, and I've got a couple other ones lined up for for this year, but one thing I've I've realized is that, like, not comparing myself to Stephen A, but like someone who's sort of found themselves in a moment and realized that, Hey, this is a chance to, um, maybe this is like a sign that you should go for the things you want to do. Right. Uh, you asked me a question a couple of weeks ago. You were like, what do you want? And no matter what you want, are you afraid of saying you want it or afraid of success? Or you said something like that. And I'll say, man, psh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> But I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I've never actually audibly said that I want this. I want that. Um, it's always been like, oh, we know it'd be nice if, you know, this ever happened or if this ever happened. But I wanted to take this opportunity to say one, thank you for letting me go to Vegas. Um, thank you for not inviting me. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, always challenging me to think bigger and think differently than how I've always thought. Because I can't be married to no basic. Sorry. What does I say? It rhymes with rings. You're a baby. Y'all, no. remind me to tell no. you the story. So this is me saying I want to be creative i want us to be creative i want our baby brush vibes to be a thing and i want to continue to go on basketball podcasts or podcasts and talk basketball i want to go on other podcasts and talk about you and me i want to go on other podcasts with you i want us to continue to cultivate and build and shake some things up Okay. Oh. So that's why I, I wanted to talk about last year that. because that's all kind of been a part of me coming to this this realization. Okay. 
Um, and some encouragement from people in NBA threats, especially as it pertains to the podcast. Like some, yeah. people, some people have said, yo, just put, just like put it out there. Y'all are really good. Um, and not that I didn't, not that I ever thought we weren't, but I don't know. It's just that like, you can't not, you can't just like not put yourself all the way out there. Mm-hmm. But even as I'm comfortable being memed, and gift and gift putting you and me out freaks back freaks back putting you start gifting again yeah putting you and me out there um like our family like it's just it's different but you know what yeah because that one time what's good for the goose went viral and people were so mean to me (laughs) yeah they're they're really good they're really mean to you know what she's talking about no i don't know what a damn gander is well, number one, another goose. number one, everybody on the internet is more is smarter than you are. Rem- always know, always know, and understand that. Um, we'll have to like someone's always that someone, video. someone's always smarter than you. David picked like one clip. There's been two that you clipped that that went viral on viral ish on reels. One was me saying that dads get more accolades. So the the goose and gander was Facebook. Facebook, okay. The read the you talking about dads having a little that bar was, was Instagram. That was Instagram. Um, and I was like, why are people so so mean? I see why they say don't read the comments. And these were like basic like local people. Speaking of, did you um did you ever listen to my podcast? I started. Did you still listen to it? Well, uh, me and Tone Tone gave you we gave you your uh, your props because hmm. we both agreed that. You're actually right. About what? About there being a little bar for debts. I told him, I was like, you and I take the, we take counterpoints often because I think it, it works for the, for the dynamic. But, um, after we had that conversation and once I started taking the girls out for the daddy daughter breakfast, <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, I mean, she's right. I just, I just be out eating with the girls and, She's like, oh my gosh, keep, you're amazing. <laughs> I go out with them. People are like, why do you have so many damn kids? Yeah, yeah. Kids come from, close your legs. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, you can't handle keeping up with all these kids. Your hands are full. You should have had all these kids. But dad, it's like, oh Yeah, we got to do, uh, we got to do better as a society. Um, but yes, I, 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 I am fully embracing whatever this is. Um, but I also want to embrace the time we have, um, and the, uh, the opportunity, I should say we have, since we get to do something like this, um, to, you know, push it to the limit. I support it. Um, I'll get some mailbag questions. Let's do it. Um, Steve wants to know exactly how much money you need to have before we move to LA to be his best friends. Um, I definitely think there's such great opportunity to be Steve's best friend. Um, <laughs> I I responded to that. I didn't realize it was part of a mailbag thread. But I think I said two million liquid in a Tesla. But I don't why, know why a Tesla? Two, because in California, you don't drive. You have to have a Tesla in California. I mean, there's a lot a of Tesla. driving yeah. Tesla that'll uh, 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 like eventually. Just because they were based, they were based in California yeah. for so long. But everybody, the last time I was in, when was the last time I was in Cali? Oh my gosh, your thirtieth was it? It wasn't. It was thirty. It was a weird number. Yeah, it was like thirty-two. Um, Thirty-one, thirty-two. Everybody has a Tesla. So yeah, but I feel like two million liquid is two, still not enough. Well, I, I I think if you have two million liquid, you're probably making a decent amount. Okay, okay. So so it could be in Calabasas. Yeah, I mean we don't gotta be in LA proper. Mm, okay. We gotta be in Southern California. I gotta be able to shop on Rodeo. <laughs> it's Rodeo, man. No, What's wrong I, with you? Don't be so don't don't have people thinking that you simple. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to say Rodeo. <laughs> Not you. I know it's Rodeo Drive. Everybody, calm down. Um, shop, shop out there. All right, two million liquid and a Tesla. Yeah, poor Sarah. She was like, "Nah." I, went, I was like, "Girl." 
<laughs> not moving out to not moving out to Portland. You see, if Sarah was in Seattle, that could be a different conversation. No. I would do Seattle over Portland. I would not no do offense, I would not do either. Nor Cal. Nor no. <laughs> Southern I Cal. San, I loved Southern, I loved San Francisco. Southern Cal or die. Well, not San Jose, which is where I stayed, but I did like San uh, San Francisco and Oakland. Um, we have to do a couple of basketball questions because we didn't do any last week. But um, we did talk about we talked about offense and defense. Um, Why? I didn't. I didn't like the way we handled the question. Oh, it wasn't like a you thing. It was it was both of us. Oh. I, I didn't do a great of a job either. Um, uh, Ronan, in fact, wanted to know pound for pound who's the better athlete between us. You and me. I, I told him we kind of already touched on it on our world, the world uh, with what's it called, world champion vibes episode. With caveat, I will say that you are the better athlete, but I think why does it be caveat? Because athleticism was encouraged for you being a male, um, me being the child of immigrants. Academics was encouraged for me i i yes i could participate in sports but for me i think being a woman in sports was never seen as an opportunity to be wealthy i think if i was a boy and i played basketball in high school like i did soccer ran track all of that it would have been encouraged because boys and athleticism is a thing um whereas for for my family from my experience it wasn't necessarily respected. It was more, it was legitimately just an extracurricular activity. I don't think it was seen that, Oh, she could possibly be good enough to get a so, scholarship. She, I'm still speaking. So I didn't even approach it with that energy or that effort to be like, I'm, I can be, I am so good. Um, so I do, I do think that you are the better athlete. I have the better muscle memory. Um, Yes. What was that supposed to mean? Because like when I be when I be in the gym, first of all, I worked out through two pregnancies. Like till I physically could not do it anymore. I'm talking about I was doing deadlifts and squats, like 155 pounds with a whole extra human inside of me. So like athletically, I do think that if you, I don't know how you can even the playing field with you being male, me being female, but I would say athletically when we are, we can both be at a good peak together. We could probably even out. Um, but you have advantages. You're taller than me. You're leaner than me. You're male. So you don't have as much body fat as I do. Um, I know you're going to say that you're the better athlete because you're self-absorbed. I'm self absorbed when it comes to athleticism and you think that you are an athlete and your family thinks that oh the athleticism comes from your side we're gonna have a, we're, we're gonna have a family conversation we're gonna talk this out so that you can get that get that hurt out your heart nope um you answer the question with your biased opinion <laughs> yeah i think i'm a better athlete yeah, of course you do but I really thought this would be your opportunity to like. I thought you'd surprise me. You didn't. You, you want me to lie? No, I just mean that you want me to not tell the truth. Would, I thought you would take a moment to assess because not only in sports am I athletic, but I'm also athletic in dance because I am a former dancer. Mm -hmm. And that that I was talking to one of my friends, and we were talking about is dance a sport or an art? So Absolutely actually, a sport we got into a, a deep conversation about, you know, the, the, the verbiage that's used in reference to, to dance and why it's absolutely. Sport. And I think it's a sport that can execute it's both. I mean, sports is, is art. It is. Um, but I think because I don't know that sports gives you more freestyle opportunities, whereas dance does. Hmm. So, you know, I can, I can do a free spirited or free. I can do a interpretive dance. Whereas it's like, you can't do an interpretive layup. 
you can't do an interpretive free throw. Like you can't do it. Can you do a spin and then toss the ball? No, you can't do it. Have you watched Kyrie? Have you watched Kyrie play basketball at the free throw line? I mean, you're allowed to do your routine as long as you don't cross the line and you do it within ten seconds. True, Um, but I, I do think that dance is a sport that can execute as an art form. So we had this this breakdown about it, and I was even talking to her about how. I think the terminology makes a difference too. Like a lot of dancers, we refer to going to dance as dance class. And I, I even referenced you that you would always say, okay, girls, it's time to go to dance practice. And I'd correct you that it's dance class, but practice is a reinforcement of, of an act um, where class is the learning. So I, I do think that using that sport, more sportsman terminology can make a difference. I also think that if you think of like a hip hop that is probably more seen as a sporty or athletic form of dance, as opposed to a ballroom, as opposed to a ballet or a point where all are physically demanding, but one comes off as more masculine whereas others can come off as more feminine. And I think that's a lot of times where you have your descriptors between, oh, it's an art as opposed to it's a sport. But yeah, you're more athletic than me. whoop de doo So I, I just want to point out that I have, um, I don't have the greatest hips because I'm not. I got great hips, yeah. A lot of my, um, I don't have great flexibility in my. He has no flexibility. In my hamstrings and in my. Um, he can't touch in my hip, hip flexors. But I have really good feet. And I have really great hand eye coordination. At least I, I did. It's not as great as it used to be now. Um, I have all these things too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like. You're the better athlete. I'm saying, I'm building, I'm building my case as you, I allowed you to do yours. I'm just trying to do the same. Um, yeah, I mean, fast. I jump high for not being that tall. I jumped the highest in my family between my, my three brothers and I, and that's including my brother who's six foot six. Um, I have the ability to talk about muscle memory, but I, uh, for my frame, I'm really strong now and have the ability to gain a lot of strength, which I think shouldn't be taken for granted fast twitch muscle fibers like I, I go down the line but i don't, I don't want to because i feel like you're just like <laughs> you're gonna paint me as some narcissist when when i'm not talking about my athleticism you tell me i'm too selfless so it's i'm too modest so it's it's funny how i can't win but anyways we'll go to the next question subtle segue um but anyway which nba team is your biggest surprise and which team is your biggest disappointment? My biggest surprise. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is from uh, Wealth Warrior. Hey. Um, ooh, my biggest surprise. Positive surprise or negative surprise? I would assume positive, but answer it how you, how you receive it. Honestly, I, I'm I'm going to keep it with the home team and I'm going to say the Celtics because there was... You live in Charlotte. Like my hometown team. You live in Charlotte. My hometown team is the Celtics. Disrespect the Charlotte. Because they're going to be... <laughs> Disappointment. Um, because there was that season where the Celtics were not good. For several seasons, actually, um, yeah. And that was... Fortunately, it fell during a time where I wasn't like really following basketball, I might've been having babies. There might've been a pen. I might've just like life was happening and I just wasn't, there was no NBA thread. So I really, you know, again, I'm a playoffs finals girl. Um, so having this moment of being in basketball and having the team that I actually have always rooted for, like doing so well, that's, that's bringing me great joy. Uh, the, it was disappointment. It, I, it's the Hornets. I'm like, what are y'all doing? What like I live here. At least, at least let the news not embarrass me on a regular basis. Um, yeah, there. Yeah, Charlotte professional sports is everywhere. You got millionaires great. throwing drinks on people. You got the Panthers. Did they win a game at all? I think they won one game, and it was mm -hmm. like by a point. Yeah, well. 
Um, and I'm like, this is the year I paid for my kid to be a cheerleader, to be a, a junior top cat. Yeah, probably one of the better, better entertaining parts of the season. It was. For, for Panthers. I cared. And anytime I didn't support the Panthers, she was like, but that's the team I cheer for. And I'm like, no, you don't. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say it's the Hornets. I would expect um, more. I think that there are a lot of teams that usually are on my radar that are not that I don't even know like where their stats are that they kind it kind of disappoints me honestly if I have to say it I'm looking disappointed with the Lakers like I just I feel like they have such a following and everybody is all about them and after the in-season tournament I really was expecting them my expectation was they were just going to kill the season and and be like we slaughtered the battle and we took the war and it's like they those those night walk they 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 got them like where's Jon Snow they need a Jon Snow to help no they need Arya that's are you done your turn thanks Mr. Sensitive um my biggest surprise uh, it's actually the Orlando Magic. They've been playing really, really well. And their uh, halftime shows are great. So I've heard. <laughs> I usually switch to other games yeah, during halftime shows. Uh, I don't watch. I don't pay for league pass to watch halftime shows. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ben Carroll is playing really well. He's playing like an all star. I think he'll be an all star. Probably get for Orlando. I think the third, third or fourth in the East. Let me check off the top of my head. Um, don't fail me, Wi-Fi. Why would the Wi-Fi fail you? Oh no! They're, wow, they're eighth. But that's because every that's like four through eight. It's all within like a game and a half of each other. But um, no, they're playing well. Um, five games above five hundred. I think at one point they had the longest winning streak in the league. I think they got up to like eight or nine games. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and this is for a team that's been really bad for for a while. So they've got some they've got some good young talent: Bancaro, Wagner, uh, the two Wagner brothers. Uh, I think they just got Wendell Carter back, and uh, Fultz just came back, and then they've got Suggs and and Cole Anthony. So they've got they've got a lot of young talent that's that's playing well. And they've that they've had that team together for for a couple of seasons now, so they've kind of got the continuity and the and the chemistry. So um, I'm hoping they won't flame out as the season goes on. Uh, I hope that they only continue to build from here. But uh, I think so far they've kind of been my my early season surprise, and I I actually called it that they were one of my, they were my dark horse team before the season started. You put any money on that? Putting money on them being a dark horse. I can, but I mean, I think it's too late now. I don't know how that works. Well, and I, there was no like definition. I didn't say they'd be like a certain seed or they'd go certain register. They were my dark horse. Oh, okay. Um, big disappointment. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really easy. Like I feel like at the Spurs, the Pistons, um, the pi leave the Pistons, the Hornets, leave the Pistons out of this. Cause you're not supposed to be this bad. Right. Who like, says that? You're not supposed to like there are teams where we're like, okay, we're not gonna be great, but it's like we're like not supposed jazz. to like, even the Jazz are better than the they're like a tier above the Pistons and the Spurs. Um No, it's it's for me it's 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 gotta be the Lakers. They uh they pretty much brought everybody back other than than Schroeder. <laughs> from the, the team last year and you know granted we had some people hurt at the beginning of the season um, but yeah we've uh, been pretty inconsistent the AD's been great LeBron obviously has been fantastic AD has done his his thing he stayed pretty relatively healthy too like I think he's, he's only missed one he's game beast. he looks like he's huge 6'10 six, 6'11 six, but he's, he's his wingspan is like Seven three. Did you stand up next to his at the Hall of Fame? 
I don't think he was there. I think Giannis. I think it was Giannis. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was thinking that during the game. I'm sorry to cut you off, but to be and granted, there. I guess they're all in the same league in terms of size. It is a the idea of throwing your body up to get a ball into a basket where there are men who are your size or larger as an obstacle. Yeah. That is, that's some military type stuff. Like one of the guys on the Timberwolves, I don't know who he is. Cause you know, I don't know. I know like the OGs and like the really popular people. I don't know who this guy is. He was a beast. I was like, there was no, I could not be an athlete. There's no way I would throw my body against his. Mm. Like I would die. Like how do you die? His poor wife. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, the Lakers well, we made the big push for the end season tournament. I know a lot of people like try to knock it, but it's like anyone whose team, like if anybody's team had won, they'd be excited about it. Mm-hmm. But because the Lakers won, everybody wants to try to like knock it and make it seem like it's some joke. Um, I don't which knock is, it. I think it's I, which I, is which is which is fine. But no, it, I think it is it is significant. Obviously, it's, it's the first yeah first one the run. I got I to go. I got to go to the first in season tournament years to see if it's a curse. Okay. Uh, but yeah, in like what, twenty twenty six. Yeah, they're they're nineteen we'll and, and nineteen as of tonight. Nineteen they, wins, nineteen losses. Nineteen wins, nineteen losses. How many games are in a season? Eighty two. Goodness gracious. How yeah. many games are in a football season? Eighteen. I think they're up to eighteen. Okay, because they only do one a week, so yeah. Lord. Yeah. So um Yes, Lakers. But at, with that being said, uh, I think we're still relatively close to the the pace of wins that we had last year, which is a reason why we shouldn't panic. But it's not a great place because we ended up being in the play in last year, and we had to play in the play in and then get all the way to the uh, to the West Conference Finals. So it'd be nice to get like up to six to avoid the play in. But I don't. <laughs> you don't anticipate that. So I mean, sixth place. I mean, technically, the the Pelicans are in sixth place right now. That's only the four game lead. No, the Pelicans were contenders to anything, and then I just saw them whoop Golden State. Well, that's like because Golden State who misbehaved. Golden State's not that not that good. So it's because they're old. I mean, look at them. I mean, Draymond's been in and out of the lineup. Um, there's Andrew there's Wiggins. State that I Andrew Wiggins hasn't with. been playing well. Clay's been up and down, mostly down. Chris Paul's hurt. Is Iguodala still in the league? No, he retired. And um, they've got some young guys that, for some reason, Steve Kerr doesn't want to play consistently. So it's it's a weird time in Golden State. And then Clay is eligible for an extension. That yeah, I'm assuming he wants a max extension, but I don't think he's going to get it. I know he's not going to get it actually. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, to get to six, you got to win. I mean, they could they could do it. They won't. But more than likely you're looking at a play in game. Um Next. But, we'll, but we'll see. Oh. Uh we'll do one more question. Make it a good one. What was the best era of basketball and why? <gasps> so and this was from uh from Tony at Benchmob. I am going to say for me, I'm not going to say like the best era of basketball, like definitively, but I know the best era for me was the late nineties to to 2010s for me. Cause that's Iverson, Kobe, T-Mac, Vince, Steve Francis, like just, you know, Garnett, Duncan, Shaq, <laughs> um, no, you know Dirk, Steve, Nat, like it was just a great era of basketball. Um, 
you used to have dominant big men, and then you also had you had guards like dominant guards. Vince was tearing the league up. T Mac was tearing like Kobe was like it was. I'm sorry, I <laughs> I might pass out to talk about like it was for me that was the best era of basketball. Mm. Like it just it didn't didn't get any better. But I'm probably biased because that's the era I came up with. Like that's that's the era I watched. That's what that's the era that made me fall in love with mm-hmm. with basketball. Um, even had a Michael Jordan, you know, came out of retirement and was playing for the Wizards. So uh, I would say that was that was my era. And just just the amount of star power. I think um, that was in the league. Dwayne Wade, Crummy Chris. Like I could literally go down the line. Um, I know you're just gonna see something like crazy every night. Like whether it was a Vince Duck dunk, Kobe dropping sixty two points in three quarters, Shaq dunking on somebody, Duncan shooting eighteen footers off the glide. And then LeBron comes into like <laughs> oh I can't. Look, I'm sorry. What about you? I think I'm going to take it further back. I think I'm going to do more early 90s, mid 90s. And granted, I was a small child then. Um, Outside of soccer, my dad wasn't really into sports. But I Mm. do recall him like talking about Jordan, talking about Magic Johnson, like like these like more classic players, Um, which is weird to say because, you know, basketball goes back way further than that but i think those are the the players that i that's the time of basketball like i remember um names that i remember hearing conversations and stuff like that i think those are the people that that's the time window that i feel like basketball really became i don't even know the right term to use um but it just it became accessible for everyone, mm. uh, in my opinion. So I'm thinking that late eighties, early nineties or mid eighties, early nineties, like those players, I feel like really set the bar. Uh, and this is not to discredit like Kareem and, Charles. you know, Kareem, Kareem play in the eighties. I know, okay. but I said late eighties, I said mid eighties. Mm. I feel like Kareem's time is more early eighties and then Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, so, I mean, I don't know exactly like years, seasons people play, but I, I think in my head I have it one way and I'm not um, articulating it well. Um, but like this is not me because I think of those people more like 70s. Um, I guess I go from when they started as opposed to like the run through. Um, but I just, and a lot of the documentaries and movies that I've watched, like I've watched the one with um, uh, about magic I watched a few episodes of it, of it on um, the Lakers in the eighties on HBO max. Um, and then of course, you know, you've got Jordan. I feel like Jordan really just made basketball mainstream for people who wouldn't normally be into basketball, who wouldn't be about basketball. So I have a great appreciation for him and his story. Um, and I think because like he was always in the news for something. Um, and then unfortunately like his, his father passed away and all of that. So like, I just had a lot of more, I had more cultural relevance to those players. And then of course you had magic and then his little incident, um, and why he was all up in the news. Um, and then Larry, well, Larry birds obviously have a different time, but I had a great appreciation for Larry bird. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm an old school type. I feel like, you know, you got to go back to these guys and it's those guys who set the example for the people that you were referencing. But that's really just how generations work, where it's always the previous generations, because everybody you listed, like those are the people that I actually know by name. As much as I'm into basketball now, I don't know as many new names as like if you gave me a pop quiz and were like name, like name 20 basketball players, probably outside of like Tatum they would all be from 10 years ago and above like Curry and everybody up there. So um, I do find that interesting that those are my reference points, but, um, but yeah, I love, I love the OGs. I feel like they just, they're just cool. And even for some reason, when I think about like old school basketball, the Harlem Globetrotters theme song plays in my head. Don't know why, Um, but it does. 
probably because the Harlem Globetrotters visited my school in elementary school. It was actually really cool. Um, and they spun a basketball on my finger. They were like, don't move. Do, 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 um, do, 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 do. Is that it? Yeah, I like I like the OGs. So, uh, New Goat, because I wanted to get, because I pretty much hit all the questions. Uh, New Goat asks, is there a realistic trade the Lakers can make to truly contend in the West this year? Everybody. As my meme would suggest, trade everybody. Um, oh, you did say that. <laughs> I say it pretty, pretty regularly. Uh, I think the trade that the Lakers make that will change the course of their season yeah, for the better or for the worse, I think it's a trade no one's talked about yet. It's not living. So you want to be the one? Hmm? So you want to be the one to talk? No, about? I'm saying I don't think it's one that's that's been floated yet. Like there's people have talked about Zach Levine in Chicago. People have talked about Dejounte Murray in in Atlanta. I know none of these people. I don't think I think the trade that ends up happening is one that nobody's talking about like right now. Oh, it's okay. one that'll develop later because oh, nobody knows that it's going to drop it. Like yeah, it's one that no one knows it's a possibility. But like maybe the week of the trade deadline or the week before. You know, you get rumblings and then people start reporting and then it's like something I need to get more familiar with understanding like how trades work and because they do like in season trade. I didn't realize that was a thing like um, what's his face just got traded. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he like played his heart out and everyone was like, why? Because you about like you about to go to New York. And I was like, I didn't realize I've heard the term in season trade, but it's like I don't know that I actually activated it in my mind. So I, I need there's. I need there to be someone who was like me with sports, who understands like the foundation, like maybe like intermediate, but wants to become advanced, mm. um, who can break down those other fundamental things for me. But I'm, I apologize for interrupting you. I, can, I might be able to help you with those things. If you just ask, uh, no, cause you'd be rude. I'm not, I'm not rude. I'm really not You're pretentious. You think you don't, you don't know what this means? You don't know who... Of course means. you don't, which is why you're asking me. Like, why would I Why would I have that response? to be humble. How you want me to be humble? Yeah. Okay. But I don't want to be treated like a dumb girl. Like, oh, she's a girl, she doesn't know. You're asking a lot. How about you just let me teach you how I teach, and then you take it? I'm just going to ask Sarah. Hmm? I'm just going to ask Sarah, then. I'm going to Portland. I'll be in L.A. with Steve. Ooh, can we go to that donut shop? Donut shop. No, you went there. Oh, but I'm um, talking to Sarah. Voodoo. Voodoo donuts. It was alright. Was it? Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, we got invited to a Scotch and Donut event next week, but we don't have a babysitter, so I guess you'll stay home. Or you'll stay home. <laughs> uh, we'll take the kids with us. Leave them in the car with it. Uh, only RSVP'd for two. <sighs> Dang. Uh, when do we go? When do we go out back? Outback Saturday. Saturday coming. Okay. They don't have to go. I'm I'm trying to arrange them to be gone this weekend. Okay, please. It's a long do. weekend. Please do. We can probably only get like one night with well, the two let's littles. Take them to Outback and then ditch them. And then ditch them and then pick them up Monday. Maybe. Um, Sorry, y'all. We're trying to find a babysitter. Yeah, and while we're recording this podcast, uh, yeah, I think it's one that'll 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 develop. Over the next, and that'll be the person that saves the team. The the person or the people. Like last year, it was it was a series of trades that happened close to the deadline. That ended up turning the season around. They got they got Ru- they got a uh, Russell, they got Vando, they got Rui. They brought in Malik Beasley, even though you know he didn't really pan out. Um, that really swung the season for them. And before that, people thought, like, oh, there's no way they're going to get rid of Russ without trading two first round picks. And, you know, they ended up they ended up doing exactly what people said they weren't going to be able to do. So there's always you can always make trades in the league. People are always people's priorities and their their game plans are constantly shifting depending upon how the teams are playing. So uh, it just depends. Everything has a price. So it just depends on if you want to pay it and how willing somebody is to adjust their price based on mm-hmm. you know whatever their their changing priorities are so yeah i mean I, I, hopefully that's not like a 
like a Dodge, but I don't like the Levine trade. Um, the Murray trade I'd be okay with, but I don't, I don't even think that's the one. I think it, it might be a trade that the possibility of it and it, the actuality of it is something that will happen within the next couple of weeks. I don't think it's anything that people are talking about right now. So that's my piece. What was the question? Is there a trade that the Lakers can make that will change, that will make them a contender? Yeah, I think they just need to trade for Draymond. So we're going to wrap up. <laughs> Thank you guys for. Uh, I, I think it's a viable option. NBA threads. Thank you again Thoughts for out. for submitting questions. Slap out. Sorry, this was a little bit of Punch an, out. a little bit of an unorthodox. Uh, I, I guess I don't know. It didn't feel that much different to me. Felt different to me. But um, I think I just needed a little bit of. Well, from now on, I'll I'll make sure that I give you more notice. Since you clearly don't like me just taking initiative. I do. But that's the problem. You you don't take the right initiative. Yeah. Because there's so many degrees of initiative, right? Yes. There are avenues of initiative. I see that. But life would be easier if there was just one. But there's not. For you. Maybe you're the problem. <laughs> no, it's not me. Oh, I think it might be. It's you. Yeah. Taylor Swift. I was prepared. Um, thank you to everyone who subscribed. Um, I wish I knew off the top of my head, but we got like three and I feel like they're all from uh, NBA threads. So we appreciate you guys. Me too. Thank you um, for listening. Yeah. Thanks for listening and the feedback and the comments and all that. Sharing on threads. It's, it's Yeah. Like two people shared last week. I didn't even share on threads. Um, but once they share it, I reshare <laughs> We shared with this, so uh, we we appreciate you guys doing that, man. A lot of a lot of the encouragement and love has encouraged and motivated me to to fully come out and say what I said here on this podcast and, and try to step into and own uh, my dreams and aspirations. So thank you all for that. And for anyone who's not part of NBA Threads, not part of the uh, original Vibe Tribe who come across this and enjoyed that the conversation in the episode, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that you catch future episodes. Um, and that our episodes, uh, people by liking, you know, help our episodes, our content show up for other people and, uh, run Spotify, Apple, YouTube music, and tune in. <laughs> Um, anything coming up or any reason why we wouldn't be able to be back next week? This is episode 95, by the way, I think. Oh, wow. It's either 94 or 95. I think it's 95 though. So we'll be hitting a hundred, maybe around your birthday. My birthday doesn't matter. Before, before, before the, before the birthday. Yeah. So that'll be cool. Milestone. 100 episodes. 100 episodes. 100 episodes of Rush Fives. We're to, you know what? We should probably pop a bottle. Uh, we can. Yeah. We got a lot we've, of... We've got bottles to pop. Like, I don't know what I'm saving them for. I don't either. I keep looking at them like, I want to open these, but you see what happens when I open one, I get, I get yelled at. So I just... I'm really just going to find myself like this little corner. You that, can't. I know. I find myself this little corner in the house and no I'll have... I'll have I'll have my responsibilities, the things that I that I need to do, and I'll do those. But once they're done, I'm just gonna go back to my corner, so that I can't disrupt anything. I can't mess anything up. No, I can't be frustrated. It'd be like exactly. You gonna go you see, corner? <laughs> no, it's gonna be. I'm not gonna hide. It's gonna be a very open, invisible corner. It might just. I might just like right there. You can see me from any corner of the house. It's gonna be right there. No, that won't and that's where I'm gonna sit. If you need something, I'll be like, all right. Whatever you need me to do. But I won't venture outside of that corner because apparently when I do bad things happen and I mess up and I do things I'm not supposed to do. So help y'all pray for me because I need it. Um, I do. <laughs> you actually do need it. I do need it. I know. That's 
why I said it. Wrap it up. I gotta go to bed. All right. We'll be back next week, hopefully. <laughs> we might have to record from my corner. Appreciate y'all. Bye. Bye. Pedia Light. None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. Stop me now. Can't stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too far, can't stop me now.